Hi, welcome to the Rosewell Amps workshop. Here we're just starting out on an orange GRO 100, an early 70s amp. This first video will we'll just take a look at the condition and a general general overview, and we'll assess what uh, work needs doing. Now I've already uh, blown it out with the air compressor and got got rid of most of the dust. But you've got to leave a little bit in because uh, it all adds to the tone. That's a joke. Cabinets down here. Um, in pretty good shape. Should clean up well. The control panels got some damage here, but the rest of it's pretty good. Original transformers. I've taken the valves out so I could get better access to clean it. I've also had a good look at the sockets to make sure they're not uh, there's no not been any arcing or burning. We'll have a closer look at the sockets when we turn it over. And I've already checked the value of the fuses. Now it's amazing what owners can do with fuses. Just last week I had a fender amp in and I checked the HT fuse. It should be a quarter of an amp and it had an 8 amp HT fuse. Wow. I got the schematic up in case I need it from the Schematic Heaven website and you can see these are the inputs, the, the jacks and it goes straight into a six-way switch and that selects the frequency response of the amp. You can set it for full range, mid or just let the highs through. In practice, the first three positions do very little. It's only when you go to the top, the treble um, end, that you, you, you hear much difference. So that's the preamp, and then if I can adjust the computer, that's the um, there's another fa another stage of amplification, then there's the driver valve, which is a cathodian phase splitter, and the four EL34s. Oh, it does have a, a, a very simple primitive effects loop. And then all what's left is the power supply. So let's flip it over and take a look. Oops, trying to do this one handed while holding the phone. Let's just pause it. That's better. Let's take a close look. The main filter capacitors are not bulging, so. We'll take a closer look at those, but they could, and it's probably wise to replace them after after this uh, sort of period in time. These two have been replaced in the past, and these should be 32 microfarad, and someone's put 47 microfarads in, which will make no real difference. But I think those have been replaced many years ago. These are the bias filter capacitors. They will need replacing. These were poor caps. I've had them fail lots of times. Another HT filter cap and two more. The EL34 octal valve holders look to be in good condition. I can't see any arcing or burning. As is the four screen grid resistors. They look to be in good shape. Preamp valves look okay. 
the pots. The uh, Alan Bradley. Just got a single on off switch, no standby switch. We've got a um, control for the heaters, heater balance, the humdinger control. You adjust that for minimum hum, balances out the heater voltage. And then we've got the bias pot just here. Behind this screen plate, there's the uh, input jacks and also the six way switch. The controls are the, the six way switch, uh, bass, treble. That's the HF drive control. It's kind of a boost. And that's the volume. This is the effects loop. The mains lead uh, looks to have had a knock and it's been primitively repaired. There's some sleeving over it. So I may have to replace the mains lead or at least cut it back and get rid of this this bit the output tubes are GT tubes they don't make tubes they just put their stamp on them these look to be they're not JJ's they look to be Russian tubes so they'll go in the AVO tester and also the two ECC83 tubes there, GT tubes badged, and they look to be, it could be Chinese those, I think the Chinese tubes. So I'll be carefully checking all six tubes. So that's an overview, and join me on part two where We'll be having a look at um, the work that needs doing, carrying out the work. But for now, thanks for watching.